All right. Hello, I'm Duff, and welcome to my brand new YouTube channel. I should have some sort of fancy intro or something, but being so new, haven't figured it out yet. We will shortly, but you're not here for high production value. You're here for information, and information is something I have and would love to share. So let's get into it. Today, we are going to be talking about ball guide and spin control and what you can do. I've already gone ahead and hit my tee shot to right around max Bigfoot range, which if you go and watch my first video is something I explain on how to do and is very important in getting better in your ultimate golf career. So here we go. First thing I always do, let me not get ahead of myself, is apply full backspin and have a look. So full backspin, have a look, see how things look. Get your guide centered in the screen. Now you can see there's a bunch of left curl there. I want to straighten that out. So I'm going to apply some side spin to get that line looking as straight as I can. Probably can come back a bit left. So there we go. That's pretty straight. Now I'm a little too close, so I back up a bit. There we go. So in a no wind situation, if I were to hit that shot, it would probably have a good chance of going in. Land, couple of hops, nice roll right into the cup. But we don't have that situation. We have a tailwind situation. So we need to account for that secondary bounce, for what the wind is going to do to the ball after it hits the ground for the first time. So we can either guess or we have the information in front of us. Just like hitting a max Bigfoot I talked about in my other video. That information is available, you just might not have realized it. So if we back off a little bit of backspin here, so on this wind, it would probably be around there, we can see it's way past the hole, and that ball guide has expanded. So in a tailwind, that ball guide's going to expand, and in a headwind, it's going to compress. So you can see how far it's expanded. You may have noticed that you've been hitting tailwind approach shots and then you run it way long and wondered why. This is why. So I now need to adjust my aim knowing how that ball guide is going to roll out. And you can see there it picked up a little bit of left curl with that expanded ball guide as well. So I line this up. And now that's probably still a little too far away. Now we're looking at this would be a way closer shot than if you hadn't done that. So there, around there would be a good indication of how the ball is going to roll out in that tailwind. Now the important thing is you have to remember to put that backspin back on. So we put it back on, back to full backspin. So that's what the shot actually looks like. And this is what it's going to do in reality after you hit it with that tailwind. So from here, you add your backspin back on, you make your adjustment, whatever it would be, hit your shot. Now the same thing also works in a headwind situation. You can line up to the hole, get that ball guide, ooh, tough to find, get that ball guide nice and straight. And now you can take off some backspin to account for the headwind and what it's going to do. So if you had headwind on this shot, you could take off a couple bars. It would look like that. But in reality, the shot's, <coughs> pardon me, going to do that. So a couple things to take away from this. In a tailwind, add some backspin, or take off some backspin rather, have a look add it back on. In a headwind, the exact opposite. Now, how much you have to do all depends on the club, the wind conditions, the green, but it's a starting point. And here, I'm going to show you guys a video of what this looks like in real time with me taking a shot, and I'll walk you through my process. So this is from this morning, Whistler, in the, whatever tournament it was. So there, you can see I took off, I'm in a tailwind situation, and I took off around 1.9 bars of backspin. Here, I'll even go back. 
So you can see, there I am. Oh, of course I've got that silly bar in the way. Just trust me, I took off 1.9 bars of backspin. So now I'm getting my guide nice and straight. And I'm very meticulous with this. I go back and forth, I look at it, I zoom in, I zoom out, I look left, I look right, I change my angles. You can just go hit your shot right away real quick. But if you're going to do that, you better be happy with an 880 or an 890. You, it is a game of precision, and being precise definitely earns you drops. So here I am. I'm getting pretty happy. I just counted my rings to figure out exactly how far back from max I am. I have a look. Not quite happy with it. Move up a bit. See, I'm looking right through the middle of the ball guide. I really want to make sure that's straight. I'm pretty happy with how that's going to roll out. Again, all these little tiny pinpoint left, right, up, back. They make such a difference. So there I am. I added the backspin back. So that's what the shot looks like. But in reality, I know that ball guide's going to expand. So now I'm making sure my wind arrow's lined up. I'm going to move my rings. Here we go. And now you'll see me. I take off a tiny little bit of backspin. So the reason I do that is because in this game, when you move your target from a higher elevation to a lower elevation, it decreases the distance your shot will travel. I'll get into that and I'll explain that all in another video. But I just wanted to explain what I was doing there in case you wondered why I took off that tiny little, it was one little tick of backspin right at the end there. And now, let's watch the shot. Hit perfect. Spoiler alert, it goes in. Alba 606, I believe. Anyway, there we are. So now you have a, a starting point on spin control and ball guide and how you can use those to your advantage. Uh, as always, please leave something in the comments if you have a topic you want me to cover. Appreciate it if you could hit subscribe. And uh, thanks. Good luck out there.